Okay. Hi. My name is Jacob Kubrinski. I work at DevSkiller. And today I want to introduce the concept of the infrastructure as code and uh, how this uh, approach or this pattern can be simplified by uh, using the uh, conventions. So <clears throat> first, uh, wiki definition. So infrastructure as code is the process of managing and provisioning computer data centers through machine-readable de definition files rather than the physical hardware configuration or interactive configuration tools. So generally, we want to describe the infrastructure, describe all the provisioning stuff in files that are readable for machines, not by clicking and, and, and using some interactive, interactive stuff. And <clears throat> in infrastructure as code, the first question is, are we talking more about the infrastructure or more about code? So the answer is tricky, and it's that we are talking more and we are caring more about code. Why? Because it's infrastructure as code, okay? So the uh, form that we are trying to represent this, uh, this infrastructure is more important than the product. Because infrastructure, so for example, uh, uh, virtual machine on AWS on, uh, or Azure Cloud is just an uh, artifact, okay? And we can... Uh, achieve this artifact, create this virtual machine, going by many different ways. Some of them are good, some of them are better, some of them are really great, okay? So we care more, more about the code, the form of describing this infrastructure than this infrastructure itself. And uh, before we talk about the infrastructure as code, let's think about what's the infrastructure. So for me, infra infrastructure is something, it's everything that you need to run your application. So it's the hypervisor or the cloud provider. It's the it's virtual machines, operating systems, config configuration of this operating system. Like I, I, I need to have, I, I need a virtual machine on AWS cloud. I need to have an operating system like CentOS installed on it. This CentOS needs to have some packages, some users, some catalogs, some directories, some services defined, some firewall uh, ports open, etc. Okay. Then I need to have an application build pipeline because if I have an application that is more complex than a PHP that I can just async to my production environment, I need to compile this application. So I need this whole Deploy, uh, uh, build script, build pipeline, be also defined as an architecture. Okay, all deployment scripts, application configuration, it's all that we, uh, uh, we, we see as in our architecture, okay? <clears throat> and why should we even think about automating the uh, uh, infrastructure? So <clears throat> uh, the first and the most important stuff is the recovery time. If I have my R infrastructure described uh, in a scripts, in a files, that I can just reply many, many times, they will usually finish in the same amount of time. So I know that I need like 12 hours or two hours to recreate my whole infrastructure, okay? So my recovery time is fixed and it will be, uh, I can do it much faster than by clicking and then I will of, of course uh, forget about many things probably. So the backup complexity, as long as I'm creating all machines, I'm configuring all machines and I'm deploying all machines, I don't need to back up anything except the data, okay? So no more uh, uh, virtual machine backup, okay? I don't need to back up this whole hard drive, this configuration, all the packages, users, EDC uh, information, because if there is any firewall port opened, it's because my script opened this port, so I don't need to back up it, I just need to back up the script, okay? My R, uh, infrastructure becomes really, really simple. I can understand what's happening. It's readable because if you want to know wh wh what firewall ports are open on this particular server, you don't need to SSH into the server, invoke some Linux stuff, comments, etc. You just take a look at the script and you know, okay, so this script is opening this and this and this port. So that's the state of my, of my infrastructure, right? It's also uh, uh, auditable. I can version my architecture, okay? I can check, okay, so why this JVM flag has changed? Okay, git blame, and I see, okay, this and this developer changed it because of such, uh, I don't know, Jira task or something like that. Okay, <clears throat> so is it simple to do that? Generally, there are three problems. 
lack of competence is people time, and you can choose the, any combination that you want. Okay, so there are problems with competences, with competences and people, with people and time, with competences, people and time, etc. So yeah, that's the problem. That's a real problem. So how can we solve it? Uh, just try to do less. If you don't have time to do a lot of stuff, then do less. Great. So how can we do that? So <clears throat> There is something, uh, some approach called a convention over configuration. So let's think, what's the convention, what's the configuration? So the configura convention is like a function, while the configuration is like a result of this function. Okay? Okay, but what's the difference in case of infrastructure? Let's take uh, some very, very abstract uh, example. So sample configuration of the emails used at some company is there one guy has an, I don't know, Sweetie, some has an LD at Acmecom, etc. So these are emails. If you want to send email to, I don't know, Josh Long, you need to know that his email is, I don't know, John23, just because, okay? If the company grows, there will be more and more employees in this company, then you suck because you need to remember all the emails or you, have, or you need to have very, very good address book. At the same time, we can introduce the convention, name.surname at acme.com. And now I can ignore if I have like two employees in this company or 200 employees in this company. Because if I want to send email to Josh Long, I know that it's josh.long at acme.com. Because I know the function to generate the emails, so I don't need to uh, uh, know all the emails, okay? So how it applies to the infrastructure. So how we can start with the infrastructure automating the stuff. So there are many f people that think that you should start from the most easiest parts. And that's not true. Why? Because if I'm going to do anything like automate the infrastructure, I want to see the benefit of that. So I need to start from the most time consuming things. Okay. Of course I can, I don't know, automate the uh, firewall configuration because it's easy. But how often do you configure the firewall? Once per, I don't know, three months, f six months? And how often do you deploy application? Like 20 times a day, 30 times a day? So we need to start with this one, okay? Okay, so we know that we need to start from the most time consuming things. Now let's think about how conventions can help us do it easier. This is the artifact configuration. We have three applications in our company one is the user, second one is product, and third is our web application, okay? And I need to know that, okay, for the users, the artifact that I'm generating during my build is the target slash users.jar. For the product, is target slash products uh, date dot jar. And for the web app, it's web app slash target slash web app one five uh, two five dot jar. Great. Now, if you are going to automate the deployment, you need to keep this uh, information. You need to add some branches or some if statements to your deployment scripts, and it's becoming more and more complex. If you have not three applications, but 3,000 applications, those deployment scripts are becoming your monolith, okay? So what I'm doing, I'm introducing the artifact convention. I'm saying, okay, so if you want to have an application that is called users, it needs to produce target slash users dot jar. If you are going to create a web app, it will be target slash web app dot jar. But it's multi-module Maven application. That's your problem, not mine. Okay? Configure your 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 Maven build or Gradle build to produce it in this particular application. Right? Final name dot dot slash target. No problem. It's really extremely easy to do that. And now my all deployment scripts are the same. I just need to know the name of the application and I'm able to resolve everything. Okay, I have the artifact. Now let's deploy it to the servers. Okay, so for users application, the name of the servers are uh, dependent on the last cities I visited with my wife. It's so romantic. I have a Chicago, New York, Miami, and I know the whole story behind those servers. That's great. For products, a friend of mine, is uh, he, he loves mountains. So the Everest and K2s. 
for the web app, they really like music. So we have Red Hot Chili Peppers and Beatles. Great. But how should I know that <coughs> users are deployed in New York and Chicago? I don't know. I have no idea. So we can do some more simple infrastructure. Say that, okay, so the name of the server will be the name of the application, index of the server, .devx.pl. So now, where should I deploy users' application? Maybe to users 1, users 2, users 3. And products, mm, maybe products onedevoxpl okay? So no more problems. If you know the name of the application, you know the name of the servers that this application should be deployed, okay? And it also applies to any other stuff. So let's say that it's our infra configuration. I know that the virtual machine with such identifier uses such disk, uses such security group and such subnet. Great. I need to put down and write down all those IDs to be able to manage it. And we can create the infrastructure convention. Okay. And let's say that we want to use the subnet and subnet will be DevOps, Prod, West Europe, subnet, APP. Uh, We'll also have a security group for VPN component that will be DevOx, Prot, West Europe, security group, VPN. We'll have a disk that will be DevOx, Prot, West Europe disk for the VPN machine number one. And we'll have the ma virtual machine that will be DevOx, Prot, West Europe, virtual machine for the VPN number one. Okay, so we have a convention that is described above, like that is DevOx, environment, region, name of the component uh, or, or name of the element, like the in virtual machine, security group, network interface, then the name of the component, like VPN, and the index. Okay? Great. So why it's cool? First cool thing is that now I don't need to put down all the IDs because I can recreate the uh, the particular name of particular component based on the context. If I know that I'm provisioning the first virtual machine for VPN and a prod environment in West Europe, using the convention and can generate all dependent components. Why it's cool? Because should our load balancer use the public IP address? Normally, I would need to configure that. Hey. If you are creating this load balancer, please remember to define a public IP or something like that. And I'm reversing this stuff. I'm saying, okay, so if you are creating a load balancer for the West Europe production environment for votes application, please check if the public IP for the same context exists. So it's the pattern, uh, uh, let's say, borrowed from Spring Boot. Okay, if you have Spring Boot, uh, how do you say to Spring Boot, hey, please configure me MySQL connection. You just add the MySQL driver to the class path, okay? How can you say to Spring Boot, hey, I want to use RabbitMQ? You just put RabbitMQ to the class path. And that's the same here. How would you say to load balancer that, hey, please use the public IP? Just put the public IP on the class path, so on the context, right? How should we say that, okay, if you are provisioning this uh, virtual machine, please bind it to the backend pool of this particular load balancer? Easy. I'm creating the virtual machine, and during the provisioning of this particular machine, I'm checking, I'm asking the cloud provider, of uh, virtualization provider, hey, could you please tell me if such and such load balancer is defined? If yes, hmm, maybe load balancer for votes is defined, because I should use it. So I'm using it automatically, okay? So that's the basic idea of this and how we use it at, at for example, DevScaler. So we've been looking for a various uh, uh, different uh, infrastructure definition tool and they are all great, but then they don't allow you to implement those conventions. So we've created our own uh, wrapper for Terraform which is called the infra DSL, and it's how it looks, okay? So I'm defining my infrastructure in a groovy, groovy file, which allows me, for example, to invoke the for loop to generate some virtual machines, okay? And I'm creating a catalog for prod uh, environment of DevOps in West Europe, and I'm saying, here is the availability set. 
I know what will be the name of this availability set because I'm generating it. So it will be probably DevOps, Prod, West Europe, uh, Catalog, availability set. Then if I'm creating a network security group, public IP address, of course, then I create a load balancer which checks, oh, there is a public IP address, so I will use it, okay? Then I'm creating a virtual machine which says, okay, I'm a virtual machine. Is there any availability set available for me? Yes, okay, so I'm using that, okay? Is there a load balancer? Yes, it is. Okay, so I'm binding to a load balancer stuff, okay? And <clears throat> do you think that such wrapper is hard to implement. So I think that our wrapper, which covers AWS and Azure, is like 3,000 lines of code, maybe 5,000. That's all. It's something that you can write in two weeks. Okay? And it's generating the Terraform, which is a company standard or, or, or industry standard that you can use simply. Okay? And if you would at any moment say, okay, I don't want to use those conventions, doesn't work, you still have the generated file, Terraform file, that you can still use, okay? But the idea that we don't want to use this raw Terraform data is that we want to have those conventions generated. And the difference is that if we have, for example, 500 lines of Groovy DSL, it generates around 6,000 lines of uh, the Terraform information. Why? Because there are no relations between the components because those relations come from the convention. There are no names, etc. Okay, so for any component, we don't need to, to uh, put the information about the region, because we know that all components are in the same region, so we can put this information automatically, okay? So generally, if you want to go with the uh, infrastructure as code pattern, then remember that you need to start from this most time-consuming thing and simplify the infrastructure, because if the infrastructure is simple, then it's easy to automate. If it's easy to automate, you can do it and you will spend less time doing that, okay? And that's all. Thank you very much. If you will have any questions, just catch me here.